All right, so now on to the next 10 questions, uh, questions 31 through 40. Um, I want to remind you all that I've done other RDMS register reviews uh, in abdomen, RVT, and OBGYN. I will be doing in the future um, breast and echo, so stay tuned for those. Um, I'm also going to be adding some more case reviews, which should be shorter videos as opposed to the longer, you know, lecture videos, which are like 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and also f don't forget to follow on Instagram and Facebook. Instagram is um, Sonographic Tendencies. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and the little notification bell too. All right. So I guess let's get to it. Question 31. What do we call the multi-layered appearance in bowel? So here we have a picture of an appendix, nice blind endic structure. And you can see all these layers from hyperechoic to hypoechoic, hyper, hypo, and hyperechoic. There's five layers. So what do we call this multi-layered appearance in ball? Is it a bullseye sign, A? Is it B, gut signature? Is it C, laminar sign? Or D, target sign? The answer is B, gut signature. And here you can see the five layers from echogenic to hypoechoic, hyperechoic, hypo, hyper. And then he, these are the five layers. The mucosa, which is echogenic, the muscularis mucosa, which is hypoechoic, the submucosa, which is the center one, that's echogenic, muscularis propria, which is hypoechoic, and the serosa, which is the outer layer. All right, next question, 32. The alpha angle is formed by the ilium and the A, ischium, B, femur, C, acetabulum, or D, symphysis. So here you have your ilium and the alpha angle would be here. So it's between the ilium and the C, acetabulum. And that's the alpha angle there, which should be above. Well, I'm not going to say that because I think I have a question later on that. All right, so 33. What grain bleed are the arrows pointing to? So here you have sagittal right, parasagittal right, and left. And the caudothalamic grooves, um, these echogenic structures here are bleeds. So are they grade 1, A grade 1, B grade 2, C grade 3, or D grade 4? The answer is A, grade, grade 1 or subependymal. So a grade 1 is stays at the level of the sub subependymal area or the germinal matrix. Uh, grade two is once that breaks in, it starts to hemorrhage into the ventricles, the lateral ventricles, without ventricular dilatation. Uh, grade three is pretty much the same thing, intraventricular blood with ventricular dilatation. And grade four is just blood anywhere in the parenchyma. So number 34, this image shows what type hip? A uh, graph type one, A, graph type one, B, graph type two, C, graph type 3, or D, graph type 4. So here you have a very normal appearing um, infant hip with more than 50% coverage of the femoral head. The alpha angle is not measured here, but is assumed to be 60 or above. So that's a grade or graph type 1. So the answer is A, graph type 1. All right, what is the ar number 35? The arrow is pointing at what structure in this spine? A, phylum terminale, B, pedicle, C, conus medullaris, or D, cauda equina? The answer is C, conus medullaris. So here you got your conus, and that's the tip of the conus. All right, so that's what the arrow's pointing at. And this is a central canal. You can see the anechoic space there that has cerebral spinal fluid. All right, number 36. This patient presents with a red rash on both lower extremities and abdominal pain. Ultrasound shows small bowel wall thickening and hyperemia. What disease process do you suspect? So given the history of bilateral lower extremity rashes, you have to take, the, uh, take that into consideration. So is it A, appendicitis? B, henoch shineline? B, henoch shineline pupura? C, gastritis? Or D, food poisoning. So again, taking in the lower extremity rashes and small bowel wall thickening with the hyperemia, you would expect B, Henoch-Shanline-Purpura. 
Number 37. The ovaries are supported by what ligament? A. Round ligament. B. Broad ligament. C. Inguinal ligament. Or D. Ligamentum venosum. The answer is B. Broad ligament. Number 38. The anechoic area surrounding this lung, so here you have a lung, you know, it's got necrotizing pneumonia, but that's not the point of the, the question. So you got a lung that's collapsed, and you have this anechoic area surrounding the lung. Is it A, a pericardial effusion, B, a pleural effusion, C, ascites, or D, abscess? So a pericardial effusion would be around the heart, within the pericardium. Um, ascites would be fluid built up within the abdomen that's below the diaphragm. And a D, abscess, I mean, this person does have necrotizing pneumonia. They could develop an empyema or abscess within the chest. But say for some little septations, the, the fluid is pre-anechoic. So your best bet is B, pleural effusion. Number 39. An M mode in an infant in post, with post-cardiac surgery shows a flat line indicating no movement while breathing. What is this known as? A, cardiac arrest, B, pleural effusion, C, diaphragmatic hernia, or D, diaphragmatic paralysis. So when there's an injury of the phrenic nerve, you can have diaphragmatic paralysis. So that's the answer, D. You would Doppler, I mean, not Doppler, you would M-mode the, the diaphragms bilaterally and to check for movement. So if you have a flat line, you have no movement of the diaphragm indicating a D, diaphragmatic paralysis. That's a perfect uh, diaphragm. There's no hernia there. Um, a cardiac arrest would not be indicated by this image. And what was the other one? A pleural effusion. There's definitely no pleural effusion there. Number 40. An infant presents with inconsolable crying and current jelly stool. What is the most likely cause? A, ileitis, which is inflammation of ileum. B, small bowel intussusception. C, iliocolic intussusception, or D, midgut volvulus. So here in this image, you have a very clear um, case of a target lesion or a bullseye lesion. Uh, that's a iliocolic intussusception. So the answer is C, iliocolic intussusception. All right. Well, stay tuned for the next 10 questions. Take care.